On today's menu, a delicious and classic recipe that's a piece of cake to make. Incredible Lobako, also called turnip cakes. This recipe is wonderful because it really doesn't require a lot of fancy ingredients. It really is a very humble yet yeah, delicious dish. We're gonna first off, start with rehydrating these dried shiitake mushrooms. Now these ones are already rehydrated because I soaked them in some water overnight. You can use this water for this recipe, but I would recommend saving this water for something else because if we use it, it's going to turn that turnip cake sort of a really brown color and I want to keep it as white as possible. Next up, we have these incredibly delicious and versatile lobak or daikon radish or turnip. So we're going to be using this as the kind of body, the base of this recipe. These should be really easy to find at your Asian grocery store in the refrigerated section. In fact, I found these ones at my local big box store in sort of a very small Asian refrigerated section that they had. Then we're gonna have these delicious, simple green onions. They're just going to add kind of like a, a bite of freshness to this turnip cake. This rice flour is going to kind of create a batter that will bind everything together and make that turnip cake. And of course, we're just gonna use a little bit of cane sugar to sweeten up and help caramelize once we sear, as well as some salt. I prefer using Himalayan pink salt in my regular all-purpose cooking only because it has a little bit of a more subtle saltiness. And with this particular dish, we're not going to salt or season very heavily because we're going to be uh, making a bit of a soy sauce, kind of a dip for it as well. Peel the lobak. So we need about a pound of shredded daikon. So we're gonna be using this whole one and maybe half of this one. Carefully grate one pound worth of lobak into a bowl. Squeeze out the excess moisture from the shiitake mushrooms. Very carefully remove the stalks from the shiitake mushrooms. The stalks from the dry shiitake mushrooms tend to be a little bit tough and not as palatable. Chop the shiitake mushrooms into small cubes. Three sticks of green onion, finely chopped. Mixing bowl, one cup rice flour, one teaspoon cane sugar, pinch of salt, two cups water. Whisk to combine. Just gonna set this aside and then there's one last thing to do before we start cooking. Grease a 10 inch baking pan with a little bit of oil. Now traditionally you would actually steam this but I don't have a steamer so we're going to bake this in the oven. Preheat the oven to 350. Non-stick pan. Medium heat. Two tablespoons of avocado oil, shiitake mushrooms, saute for three to four minutes. Green onions, saute for about a minute. Shredded Lobak. 
Saute until the lobak is fully cooked and tender. This may take around 7 to 8 minutes. This does take a little bit of time, so just be patient, but boy is it ever going to be worth it. Give the batter a stir, then pour into the pan. Cook for about 2-3 to three minutes, the mixture will become really thick. Transfer the mixture into the greased baking pan. Flatten the mixture with a spatula using the pan as a mold. Cover the pan and bake for 25 minutes. Remember to soak your pan with some water for easy cleanup. That's basically the hard part done. In the meantime, we can make a delicious sauce that we can use for dipping or to pour over before serving. One tablespoon soy sauce. One teaspoon black vinegar. And the secret, but not so secret ingredient is, you've guessed it, delicious chili oil. This will add that extraordinary kind of smoky flavor. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to check this out. Make this really easily at home from a previous episode. One tablespoon chili oil. Mix. Allow the turnip cake to cool and covered for about five to eight minutes. Use a spatula to release it from the pan. You know, the hardest part of this recipe is actually not eating it right away. Gently cut the turnip cake into six squares. Non-stick pan. Medium heat. One tablespoon of avocado oil. Place in and sear the turnip cakes. Sear the turnip cakes for about 3 to 4 minutes. Carefully flip the turnip cakes. Sear the other side for about 3 to 4 minutes. Plate. Pour over the sauce generously. Garnish with some freshly chopped green onions. and a sprinkle of sesame seeds. You can now enjoy this delightful recipe with absolute confidence. Pat dry about 100 grams of extra firm tofu and place it in the bowl. Use a fork to mash the tofu into a crumble. Definitely don't be shy on that garlic. 
four to five pieces of garlic, finely chopped. Small piece of ginger, finely chopped. Three sticks green onion, finely chopped. Right, so before we start cooking, there are a few ingredients that are somewhat specialty, but you should be able to find at a Asian grocery store. So first up are these Taiwanese knife paired noodles. These are kind of these dainty, flat, thick wheat noodles that are cut specifically to have this kind of almost ribbon looking like texture. These noodles are quite unique, should be pretty easy to find at an Asian supermarket, but these are perfect for this type of recipe. We have this Korean pepper powder also called gochugaru. This is actually the chili pepper that's been ground into this coarse kind of flaky like texture and mostly without the seeds. So this actually is not super spicy, but it gives that incredible smoky flavor and unmistakable golden red color. Lastly, we have this plant-based oyster sauce and this amazing, really thick dark soy sauce. This oyster sauce actually is a Canadian product and is made with shiitake mushrooms. And that is actually what gives it that incredible umami. This dark soy sauce is really popular. Now, dark soy sauce is actually used more for color than it is for flavor. And you can tell that a dark soy sauce is really nice and super thick. When you swirl it around the bottle, it really covers that glass almost like a, a thick glaze. This episode is not sponsored by any of those products. It really is just to give you an idea on what you could try next time you make a visit to your grocery store. That's why we keep on plugging our own products like the cookbooks, the Sushi Masterclass, and of course the Young Men Cooking merch. To find out more information about the books, the Sushi Masterclass, or the Young Men Cooking merch, I'll leave a link in the description box below where you can check those out. Now, let's get cooking. Non-stick pan, medium heat, one tablespoon avocado oil, crumbled tofu. Saute for three to four minutes. Two teaspoons dark soy sauce. Saute for another couple of minutes. Set aside the tofu. Bring a pot of water to boil for the noodles. Pan back on medium low heat. Two tablespoons avocado oil. Garlic and ginger. Cook for about two minutes. Cook the noodles for a minute less the package instructions. In this case, three minutes. Give the noodles a stir to keep them from sticking. One tablespoon gochugaru. Cook for about a minute. One tablespoon oyster sauce. Strain out the noodles and add to the pan. One teaspoon dark soy sauce. Crumbled tofu. 
Turn the heat up to medium and saute for 2 to 3 minutes. Green onions. Saute for another minute and it's done. Plate and serve. You can now enjoy this delicious recipe with absolute confidence. Bring a pot of water to boil for the noodles. Small piece of ginger, finely chopped. Two sticks of green onion, finely chopped. Frying pan. Medium heat. One tablespoon white sesame seeds. Toast the sesame seeds for 30 to 40 seconds. Pass the lemon water. Coarsely crush the sesame seeds. This here is a certified organic soy sauce by Kikoman, and this is kind of like the all-purpose soy sauce that I always have a few of these in my cupboard. I personally really prefer the Japanese soy sauce, and I try to look for the EcoCert JS symbol, which is the Japan equivalent to the USDA certified organic here in North America. This will give the sauce that kind of rich, full-bodied texture as well as a incredible umami. This is kind of like the chef version of perfume in a bottle. This stuff is so incredibly fragrant and incredibly delicious. This pure Japanese toasted sesame oil really takes any dish to the next level. It's so aromatic and a little bit goes a long way. This here is a Japanese black rice vinegar. It's a lot less pungent and I would say it's more mellow than the Chinese black vinegar that you get in a bigger bottle. It is a little bit more expensive than the big bottle of the Chinese black vinegar. So I do enjoy using this for dishes that don't require cooking the actual sauce. Last but not least, we have the amazingly delightful ruby red, smoky, not too spicy chili oil I made in the previous episode. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to check this out, make this really easily at home. This of course will add that unmistakable, aromatic, smoky aroma and flavor. This I think is really the backbone of the sauce. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of those brands. This episode is actually a bit of a companion video to one of the recipes found in the ramen cookbook. It's the sesame tossed noodles. I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to check out this book, along with our other cookbook, Young Men Cooking Merch, as well as the Plant Based Sushi Masterclass. All right, let's get cooking. Two tablespoons soy sauce, one tablespoon toasted sesame oil, one tablespoon black rice vinegar, two tablespoons chili oil. Mix and set aside. Boil the noodles to package instructions, in this case, 4 minutes. 3 baby bok choy, roughly chopped. Mm -hmm. 
After a minute or so, loosen the noodles with chopsticks. One minute before the noodles are done, add 60 grams of shimeji mushrooms. Bok choy. Be sure to submerge the veggies and bring to a boil. Strain out the noodles and veggies. Transfer the noodles and veggies to a mixing bowl. Pour in the sauce. Mix. Plate. Spoon over some more chili oil and serve. You can now enjoy this delicious plate of noodles with absolute confidence. Man, that just looks so delightful. Boy, oh boy, that is so, so packed with flavor. I mean, visually, this just looks beautiful. It's so rustic and earthy with the brown and the green, and those noodles really just turned color from picking up all of that sauce and absorbing it. You get this explosion of combinations of flavors from the ginger, the toasted sesame oil, the amazing toasted sesame seeds that were coarsely crushed. You get that saltiness, the umami from the soy sauce, the smokiness and that little bit of spicy bites from the chili oil really brings everything together. The shimeji mushrooms add that extra bit of texture and that earthiness, that umami. The bok choy adds that freshness and a little bit of that kind of crunchy al dente bite. Those noodles have this really delightful, satisfying, chewy texture. It gives that elasticity. And you also really taste that fresh ginger as well. This dish has such a wonderful, intense kind of sesame flavor. And it's so simple to put together. It really is a savory noodle lover's dream. Like I always say, it's dishes like this. That's just simple, rustic, delicious, easy to put together that just makes it so exciting to cook at home. And if you love easy and delicious recipes like this, then definitely check out the Ramen Cookbook, the Cook with Confidence Cookbook, the Young Man Cooking Merch, as well as the Plant-Based Sushi Masterclass. To pick up your copies or to find out more information about all those things, I'll leave a link in the description box below for you to check those things out. As always, remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell. I'll see you in the next episode.